Hi Steve. Hi boys and girls, I'm Linda, how are you? <laughs> We've got some questions we thought we would like to ask about your ute. You can ask right away, go ahead. Now usually what happens when you bring your ute to school, and we're talking about trucks and, and cars and vehicles that move, we get you to actually bring, we'll talk to the children and they come right out to the ute and sometimes they Climb sit in the tray and <laughs> yeah, they do. They do and some lucky boys and girls have even sat in the front of the cab of your ute haven't they? They have. Now I was wondering if you could point to the different parts of your ute because I know there's special names for, for different parts of a ute compared with a car. Okay well this is a well side ute. A well side ute is one that has a tray on it like this. It has bits inside and hasn't got a canopy on it and it hasn't got a flat deck so those are the different sorts of reutes there's the well side like this one the flat deck which is just a flat piece of deck on there that you can put things on or a canopy one that has a big canopy going over the top that you can access so this is um this one's because we need it for putting stuff in the back so why did you get your ute actually steve that's an interesting well, question. we had lots of things to do at the preschool lots of work all the stones at the preschool were bought in this ute that's many years ago this ute so is that all young. the stones on our garden all the stones in the garden came in the back of this ute quite a few truckloads of it um, of course lots of timber comes when i build things and the, believe it or not the whole caravan came in the back of this ute i've got a photo i'll put it on on the end of your shot so you can see the caravan on the back of the ute came so did so the little batch did you build that all the pieces of wood that yeah, made all that? the wood for that batch that i built all came on here all wow. the decking that we had so that all was brought in on the tray which is that part there lots of leaves yeah it's been on raining it all night it's a bit wet and the water is running out i just dropped the tailgate this is the tailgate on the on the well side this drops down and um I just let the water out and there's a lot of sticks in there that dropped out of the trees with the wind and the storm we had last night. So that shuts like so. It's old fashioned view, this one. But um So perhaps you could tell us um what's this down here, Steve? That's a tow ball. That's for towing trailers. And you can fit different tow balls on this because it's got a lock here, you can undo the lock and just pull that whole slides out and you put a new tow ball in there. So you have different tow bars for pulling different things? Yes. Ah. But normally most caravans in New Zealand has a tow bar that's a little bit different from this one set up for towing a, a little caravan at the moment, but it, a tr normally it would have a, a bigger ball on there and a shorter shank, that's the shank part, it would be shorter than that. Which is and the shank part? The, 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 that comes up and down oh, here, so this is quite a tall piece. That's a tall shank, but that's for an English, that's an English tow ball. So it's, it tells you how much weight you're allowed to put on the tow ball. This one's allowed three and a half tons Goodness on that me. tow ball, no more. And what's this part here that you were leaning on? That's called the back bumper bar. Number plate's on here. The number plate's got lights on it underneath. It shines at night. And around here, this side, you can see the tail lights. It's um, an indicator comes on when you're turning the corner and the stop lights come on when you put your foot on the brake. So the top one is for the stop light yep. and the bottom is for the indicator. Yes. And that says if you're going to go left on that side and on the other side if you're going to go that's right. That's right, correct. So that's... There's something along back. the side there that's very interesting that's sticking out up the top there. What's that for? What's that? What's this? That's my wing mirror. That's <laughs> so I can look in from the cab and see in the mirror, see what's coming up behind me. Or when I'm backing, I need to be able to see where I'm going. Now there's something very special on this ute that's not on ordinary cars. This is a very big tyre, Stephen. Yes, they're very big tyres, these. They take, that's a, because you need to, with lots of weight that you use. So it's a big tyre. So you couldn't put that big tyre on a car? No, because it wouldn't fit. It wouldn't oh. it would bump under the, under the mud guards. And it's very wide at the top too. Look yeah. there. So, and what's this part up the top here? This is the bonnet. And under the bonnet's the motor. Ah, and, and around the headlights, here? Headlights are here. This is the grill. This lets the hot air, uh, the air go through and cool the motor down. 
So air, do um, I think cars have bonnets too, don't they? Yeah, and they, they have grills like this oh, too they have because the engine too. needs to be cooled down because it gets really hot. So what happens is air goes through and into here and into a radiator where there's water pumped round through the radiator and that goes round the motor to keep the motor cool. And the air flowing through here keeps the water cool. Well, boys and girls, Steve's invited us into his ute. But before we go inside, I wanted to show you this big, it's sort of a long metal platform. It's called a running board. And that helps us to get inside the ute because it is quite high up off the ground. If you look down here, there's the footpath and then up there is the running board and then the seats right up there so it's quite an effort to get in especially if you are your size okay so I'm going to hop in now and hello Steve hi again welcome back inside my truck yay now I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about some of the parts in your truck uh, where should we start maybe with the gears because a lot of um, the boys and girls cars won't have a gear lever they'll have just a an automatic shift one that that you pull up and down but this has got a gear lever so it moves all around inside and moves changes the gears which means that uh, the car can go at different speeds um, I can see some numbers on the end on yes the end. there's five gears and there's five gears in the truck but there's actually a whole lot more because we can choose to select with the other gear lever what the first um, type of gear we're in because this is a shift for the four-wheel drives so we have um, this truck has four wheels that can drive the truck along most cars only have two and most cars drive with the front wheels are the ones that pull the car along or some have back wheel drive trucks normally have a back wheel drive this was the case with this but it can also have four wheel drive that means that all four wheels can move the truck. We need to do that sometimes if we're on a slippery, um, soggy surface, like on um, farmland, or on a riverbed, or on sand, or going up a steep hill. We I remember getting stuck on the sand and you had to put it into four wheel drive, didn't you? We did, so I select down out. here. We can have high wheel, high, it's the H there for high, and the N for neutral, and there's an L up the top there for low four wheel drive, which means it gears right down and that would use that for going up very steep hills. So it would go very slowly, wouldn't it? Very slowly and um, get tons of grip. And those four wheels would be all working. And they all hard. work at the same speed, which is unusual because most cars, of course, well, all cars, the wheels go at different speeds. The back wheels are organised so that one going around the furthest, which is go, when you go around a corner, the outside wheel has to go further than the inside wheel, so it has to go at a different speed. But that can lead to problems if you get stuck in soggy la soggy ground. So with this, when you select the four-wheel drive, they all go at the same speed regardless, which makes it a bit, a bit hard going around tarmac, but certainly in soft ground and sand and so forth, it means that all the wheels will pull you along. So normally, in, in like in my car, the front wheels are pulling me along. Yes, just the front wheels. In and some car. cars, the back wheels are Some moving. cars. Most most cars, it's the front wheels these days. Wow, but this car, or well, this Ute, can go with four wheels all working hard. Yes, I select that here. So I, I, at the moment it's selected just for two. But I can move that down and here to go low, or down here to go high, and uh, back up here for two wheel drive. And then, then I choose which gear, of course, I want to start in first. So I go up to there where it's got a one, you can see a one, that's the lowest gear. And then when the car gets a bit faster, you move it down into two. There's the two, can then, you spot it? <laughs> there's a two, we've been looking at those numbers, haven't we? Yes, we have. And then a three goes up and across there and up. You can see the three is up and across, and then down to the four. And then you can see a five is right up there, high on the over further. We're in fifth. And you can see there's an R there. Do you know what the R stands for, Linda? Hmm, I wonder if the boys and girls know. Stand what do you think, guys? Re reverse. It's ah. for reverse. So if I go right What's down... What's reverse? That's going backwards. Oh. Reverse. So I can go right down there, right down there to the back corner, and it's in reverse now. We'll go backwards. And that's called a gear lever. Gear shift, gear shift. And I have to do that by by hand. Every time I change a gear, I have to do it by hand. Most cars nowadays are automatic. They just change automatically the gear. 
but with it, this ute has to be done by hand. And to change gear, I put the clutch in down here, change into the gear, and then let the clutch out, and the, that's when the motor gets con joined to the. Now, Steve, drive. we so we sang a song about driving in our our um, big white ute. Um, yesterday, and I don't know if we, rem well me, <laughs> remember the right order of things yeah, to do. pretty much did, because you had the clutch, and the gear, so you're and the pressing brake. pressing down on the ears. And you remember the brake, the oh, handbrake. Oh, we didn't talk about the brake, did we? Here's the handbrake. Very it's important. It's holding the car, if it's in neutral, which it is at the moment, if I let that brake off, normally the car would roll away. Do you know why it's not rolling away? No. Because I've got my foot on the, on the foot brake. Ah, so you've got the foot on the foot brake, and that's in the middle, is it? Yeah. And then... So if I let that off... Whoop, <gasps> Oops! We, we started, backwards. <laughs> we started to go backwards. We're on a bit of a slope. So this is the handbrake. We'll hold the, uh, hold the car, and I can let the car off. So you put the key in. I put the key in. You make sure you're in neutral. Neutral. That's no wiggle, gears. Wiggle, wiggle. Yep. And turn the key with the clutch in and the foot on the brake. <laughs> But we're not going, so what do we have to do to go? So to go, we need to put it into a gear. And then first. we have to put our foot on the brake so that we can let the handbrake off. And now when I let the, 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 um, my foot brake off and put my foot on the accelerator, which is over here, we can start to go. Wow. But with my car, I just put my foot on the accelerator and I just go. Yeah, like so, you, just choose, you just choose automatic, don't you? You put the gear in automatic drive so the and the car decides, go. doesn't it? Yeah. Well, thank you, Steve. Now, there's something that we sing about a lot and it's something that's very oh, important when it's raining. I heard it the, raining. the other day. It was the wipers, wasn't it? Yes. I can make the wipers go for you, but I'll just squirt some water on the window first. And away there's they the go. water. <laughs> Wipers on the bus go, or on the car go, swish, 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 swish. 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 Yes. So I heard you singing that the other day. So wow. we'll turn those off. Now there's lots of other things in your ute that everyone's got, and that's... There's the time up there on the clock. Mm -hmm. There's a car radio here, and then there's the air con conditioning here. So it's not very, very fancy, this truck, is it? No, it's a pretty basic truck, this one, but it's been very useful for taking stuff to the preschool and back. Uh, That's for sure. It certainly has. Now we've got some things in the back here to look at because Steve's ute is always full of interesting things. And look, there's a box of something. Box of wood there for the children to cut up. It was on its way there the other day, and it's still here in the back. Oh, it'll plus soon one, be there. Plus, won't there's a tool bag down the back, I think, and there's some ropes and stuff that I need to tie things on with. Wow. So there's all sorts of things. I've got more tools on the other side of the box you can't see at the moment. No. Oh, Stephen, thank you so much for letting us look at your special ute. And we want to do a big, give this ute a big thank you because this ute has built lots of things that the priest helped us build lots or sure help have. you um, build lots yeah. of wonderful things for us to play on. And we can't wait to be back at preschool and see what you've um, done in the meantime. And I know that you've got, Steve, some special um, trucks and things that you're going to bring along for 